Hey, what's up, Bat fans? Welcome back to Imperious Rex. I'm Dinosaur Neil. And I'm Ghost Hunter Dave. Troy to the Max Extreme is uh, off duty tonight, probably yeah. home nursing a foot injury of yeah, some I'm sort. Yeah, I'm sure. I'm sure. So we brought in a real ringer. <sighs> real ringer. Someone that is uh, normally spending his Imperious Rex time as a man in the chair behind mm -hmm. camera. You may notice that he usually has a face full of chicken or other snacks. Mm. <laughs> Yeah. But not tonight. Well, tonight. there are some snacks. There are some. Show them off. That's a here. nice variety yeah, of snacks. It's actually here. Cut kind of camera. a nice... It's a nice arrangement. Yes. Oh, 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 you <laughs> ate some! <laughs> we are joined tonight by the fourth and ultimately most mysterious member of mm -hmm. Imperius Rex. Uh, PK. PK here. In the yeah. studio, first time. First time! First this time on the show! Groundbreaking uh, phenomena here. This doesn't happen every other night, Paul. It's insanity no. how hard we are gonna try to get T Max off the show to get somebody else, and you're just trying out! So, Paul, first things first. <clears throat> did you read the book? Uh, which book? The book that we're talking about tonight. Yeah. Yes, I did, I did. Great. I did. I read it today, this morning, actually. Alright. Oh, oh, oh. What? Oh my. Are you kidding? Do, do we have a call? Are, the right now? Phone, the red phone is ringing. Oh my god. Uh, I, what? This is unexpected. Paul, would you like to do the honors? Please, 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 please do please the honors. Do. Please do the honors. Yes, well. pick it up before they hang up. Yes, hello? Hello, Imperious Rex. It's me, the Batman himself, Dr. Michael Morbius. <laughs> Just kidding. Just kidding. Morbius was only a character that I became for my role in Sony Pictures' Morbius motion picture. Uh, since then, I've reverted back to myself, Jared Leto. I wanted to thank your channel for the continued support of my film, especially with all your bat ear coverage, uh, celebrating the nocturnal Avenger himself, Morbius the living vampire. If viewers out there want to help us climb the weekend box office for that illustrious number three spot, then take your family and as many co-workers as you can to see Morbius this week, and don't forget to join our Morbius Discord server where you can chat with other fans about the Morbius cinematic universe. Together, we can make Morbius most bias. Well, who think, was it? I think it was the wrong number. Hmm. Huh. Disappointing. Mm -mm. Didn't recognize him. Okay. We'll get that sorted out. We'll call IT later. <laughs> Paul, you're gonna need to get him. <laughs> now you wanna get nuts? Come on, let's get nuts. special bat book mm -hmm. talking about the batman the imposter three issue miniseries written by matson tomlin mm -hmm. and illustrated by the always wonderful andrea sorrentino i'm glad to have him back wow too uh this is part of dc's black label series which as we know was the adult oriented label that sprung out of dc's decision to flash Batman's wiener all oh, over the yeah. page. Damned! And then immediately pretend it never happened. <laughs> <laughs> yep. And even more interesting, this might be the most recent, most topical bat book we've ever done on a bat year. Wow! This came out in hardcover uh, in February, mm -hmm. just over a month ago. Yeah. Just Hot off here. the press. Yeah. Paul is the guest of honor. Uh, would you, Would you do the honors of describing what this book is about? 
My take on it, so I don't preface, I don't read much comic books. It was a classic telling tale of the Batman. You know, you have your villain, he's doing something. A little different take this time because he's a bit of an imposter. It had Batman getting beaten up, Gotham City PD involved somehow. You even had a little bit of a penguin. He uh, didn't really say anything, but he was in it was at in some point. One shot. And uh, then you also had, uh, you know, some a little bit of romance in it too. A little bit of treachery, a little bit of I didn't do it, a little bit of, you know. Well, I mean, Zoe's, did you. you eat on your way over here? <laughs> that sounds, Regular that is a perfect synopsis to someone who's read one Batman book. <laughs> and it was this the first one. one. Yeah. <laughs> what a <laughs> wonderful <laughs> synopsis. My first one. It had... Your first Batman book you've ever read. Yeah, yeah, it is. And it, he hit all the points, really. Oh, it had Batman in it, he got beat up, <laughs> stuff in it, conclusion, Cops. twist at the end. Yeah. And, a love and a love interest. And a love interest. He got them all, baby. <laughs> so, Paul, as you so eloquently described... Uh, Batman the Imposter. Mm -hmm. Bit of a retelling of Batman's early years. Yeah. His year three. Is this technically okay. a year three kind of thing? Uh, it says it's his third year. That would be perfect then. <laughs> uh, perfect year three. You'd think it's almost further in the future because there are some things that you'd think were established that are not part of this, this book series. Like his relationship with Commissioner Gordon over. Gordon's out. That's right. Like, Act. Alfred? Left. He's out. He's like, I hate kids. He's out. <laughs> I mean, not all kids, but particularly this kid. Yeah. Give him something, please. Oh, so angry. <laughs> He's just a mess. <laughs> it, yeah, it's got some interesting twists on, on characters you know and love. and This is, I would say, maybe the most grounded take of a Batman that I've ever read in a comic. You're not wrong, because I, I there don't. isn't... You, you <laughs> said it for a reason. It's really a bigger telling outside of what Batman is doing and, like, the psyche behind Bruce Wayne and all of these different things. And it's it's also got that grounded reality of, like, all of his shit still breaks sometimes, which oh, is yeah. just wonderful. Like I love that we had another instance of yeah, that, uh, that grappling. damn grappling <laughs> hook. Yeah. I do love he's he's gonna shoot the grappling hook up to climb the building. Yeah. It backfires as it does apparently. Yeah. In these early Batman years, and then he's like. All right, I'll just go through the front door. Yeah, yep. <laughs> and he does. <laughs> and he, he certainly does. But yeah, this was interesting because it's basically Batman without his support system. Mm -hmm. He doesn't have anybody to fall back on outside of Dr. Leslie Tompkins, yeah. who he just stumbles into their relationship again. <laughs> Pretty here. much, He yeah. does not want anything to do with her, but... He has a uh, an altercation with crime, mm -hmm. as he is as wont to do, yeah. and winds up breaking into her house, seeking refuge, because he's beat up and bleeding and delirious. <laughs> she patches him up, and then the next morning, she's like, you're Bruce Wayne, you are the kid that I used to treat when uh, your parents died, because she's a psychologist. Mm -hmm. And she's like, you're Batman. And he's like, yeah, you're damn right, I'm Batman. Yeah, mm -hmm. want some of this? <laughs> and she basically says, like... You're fucked up, Bruce, and I'm going to tell people you're Batman unless you come here every morning at dawn and undergo psychiatric treatment with me. One of the most interesting things that I like kind of really struck me when I was reading it was the the explanation of how he like traverses so quickly, mm -hmm. like the the pulley system and all yeah. the bikes that he had. And, uh, like, the sewer thing and all that yeah. as well. That was such a... Like, this comes back to Dave's thing on it being realistic. Because, mm -hmm. like, you do think of that infrastructure he would have to have and able to do what he does. And, like, it is a key, like, key plot point yep. to, like, hit people, like, being on his trail. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. This guy's got to have money. Oh, follow the money. Or a bunch oh, of motorcycles. That's right. So, yeah, he has, like, <laughs> 70 motorcycles stashed around the city. He has zip lines uh -huh. on skyscrapers and uh, an underground abandoned subway system that he uses to get from wherever he needs to go. He doesn't have the Batmobile, doesn't nope, have a right. Batplane, none nope. of that. And if you're thinking this sounds awfully familiar to the most recent The Batman film, mm -hmm. it's because the writer of this co-wrote that. 
and they feel oh. like they could just be spiritual sequels, they, the two of them. 100%. Uh, the first thing I mentioned to you as I was reading this in your kitchen today was <laughs> this, this, I wanted to see this in a like movie form, uh, yeah. and that like this Batman is so Robert Pattinson Batman. Right down to the eye the makeup, eye under makeup the cowl. like his like his demeanor that he's always Batman essentially. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it, I mean it could easily just be the sequel to the Batman because yeah. Batman was year two, this is year three. Mm -hmm. It's not far off. No, a couple little tweaks and, and you it would pretty make, much got it. Yeah, I think it'd make an excellent movie adaptation in all okay. honesty. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Paul, what'd you think of the Batman? Uh, the the movie? The, yeah, yeah, the newest movie. I haven't seen it yet. I'm did, actually gonna did see it tomorrow. Did all the Imperious Rex people outside of me and Neil take some sort of blood <laughs> pact to not see the Batman? I was supposed to see it last week, uh, prior to filming this, but uh, I had to make some soup. Oh, at home. well, I mean, a that's, nice chowder. That's understandable. I, okay. I mean, was it, you're forgiven. Was it worth it? It was definitely that chowder was so good. I ate like. I ate all of it in one day. Oh my. Good potato corn chowder. I'm done. A, if I Sorry, can be honest, I I'm a little it. upset that I'm just hearing about the soup now. Yeah, I was gonna say, if this soup is better than the Batman. We're we're talking okay. Oh. Forget Bat Year. Soup year. Soup year. Right soup now. Year right start now. the show, it's soup year. If we can pause on the soup for just yeah, bring it back just five Batman. goddamn seconds yeah, here. Yeah. Let's get back to Batman. Yeah. yeah. Batman or Bruce's relationship with Leslie Tompkins. Yeah. Uh, this was a character that I believe when we read year two, <laughs> you were like, who the fuck's this? What is she doing and why does she know Batman? <laughs> She's kind of a Batman mainstay in yeah. some of the earlier years. Not so much recently, but they did kind of a new twist on her. In this, she's mm -hmm. African-American, which I don't think she's ever been in the past. Uh, but she is a very interesting character where she remembers treating Bruce as a child. She uh, diagnoses young Bruce with social withdrawal, oppositional defiant disorder, PTSD, a disturbing lack of empathy, acute anxiety, and OCD. Yeah. But he's also highly intelligent, and she said he's going to grow up to be his own worst enemy. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, Alfred is terrified of him, says he was making explosives in the garden, Yeah. Uh, says he's breaking everything in the house, mm -hmm. and screaming, and screaming, and <laughs> screaming, and <laughs> screaming, and screaming, and screaming. <laughs> <laughs> to the point where Alfred just leaves. Yeah, he's done. He sent him off to like school in Russia or yeah. something yeah. like that. Yeah. Yeah. And then was just like, I'm out. I'm I, done. I cannot do like, this. I didn't ask he for any of this. I'm a butler for fuck's sake. <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> uh, when Bruce talks about his time abroad, mm -hmm. he says, uh, I went to the ends of the earth to learn to control the monster. Not to purge the fear or the pain, but to become it. This is an angry Batman. Mm, and yeah. Leslie responds with, Bruce, you sound insane. Yeah, I <laughs> Which love that line. Is, yeah. It is kind of an interesting take of Batman through the lens of someone who's not Batman, where it's like, you are obviously a psychotic. <laughs> you know? Yeah. I, that's why I kind of like the uh, psychiatrist approach, because you think of all of Batman's rogue galleries, and really him himself, as like these insane people. Pretty cool uh, perspective on yeah. the whole story. Because yeah. since Batman's creation, he's romanticized. He's the hero. Yeah. But when you, like, cut down to the barest essentials, he is a horribly disturbed, broken <laughs> individual yeah. who is dealing with his childhood trauma that he's carried with him for, like, 20-something years. They do bring up this question, like, is what he's doing making any difference is it helping anybody? And there is a line where he says something like, last night was the first night in 46 years that there hasn't been a violent crime in Gotham, mm -hmm. and that's because of me. He yeah. said people are afraid of me. Mm -hmm. And then at the end, where he is about to be arrested, he says to the arresting officer, like, arrest me if you think that's what's best. If you think that's what's best for Gotham, take me in. Mm -hmm. And then, spoilers, they let him go. Mm -hmm. So it's like, you're not all there, Bruce, but yeah. like you are, I guess your pros are outweighing the cons at this yeah, moment, yeah, but yeah. it is a very delicate balance. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So another point about Bruce Wayne, which I feel like is very interesting, and it's kind of like a kind of a weird hot topic for people who might not be familiar with like the character is like, so Bruce Wayne, parents are dead. He's a billionaire. billionaire. Uh -huh. He's got so much money and people always say like, 
why don't you just do solve the world's problems or Gotham's problems with your money? Mm -hmm. And it gives like the most logical explanation that kind of nobody has ever thought of. Like, yeah, he says something to paraphrase. He says like, uh, when my parents died, they have a trust fund for me and I get like a million dollars a year until I'm 30. Yeah. So like, I don't have access to billions. If I had a billion dollars, I would unload it on Gotham. Yeah. But it does seem to be like taking a lot of those Batman criticisms like, if Batman really wants to save Gotham, you know, he should financially invest in it and all this. It's like, well, he can't. Yeah. Moving on. Yeah, you know, it's exactly. Like, that's not the important part, but since you're so hung up on that, yeah. here's why he didn't. I and it, I think this was a perfect book to kind of incorporate that with, too. Yeah. Because it is that more down-to-earth, grounded reality. And someone, the psychiatrist, or it was the detective or psychiatrist, ask him specifically, why aren't you helping people? Because, like, that's what a normal person would ask. And yeah. that's what we ask on Twitter all the time. <laughs> and also, in this book, he enjoys hurting people. Oh, absolutely! <laughs> like, that is how he is dealing with his <laughs> fucked up psyche and his trauma. Yeah. It's like, he likes going out as Batman and doing this. Mm -hmm. So, like, it isn't sugarcoating that he's pretty much a maniac in this. Oh, yeah. And a masochist. Yeah. Let's talk about a bigger masochist and bigger crazy person. Whoa. Paul? Me? No. The imposter! Let's get oh, on the, the imposter. imposter. Yeah. It's an interesting villain where it's like a guy who's pretending to be Batman, except he's kicking people off of roofs and just killing them. That's right. So, Straight dead. Yeah. So Straight dead. it's whole pretty justice. much uh -huh. Yeah. Essentially this whole book is him trying to find the person who's impersonating him, mm -hmm. the imposter you might say, mm -hmm. and putting a stop to it. That's right. Yeah. Paul, what'd you think of this take? Uh I think it was uh so I really liked it. I really liked the take. Obviously, it's not a you know. Do you need, know, a, do you need a chocolate? Uh, no, I'm good now. <laughs> I think it was an interesting take. Uh, has this ever? Only having read one comic and seeing the <laughs> the books, I ask you guys: Has this ever been done before? Because I feel like it has been. Has it been? I'm sure it has. In all yeah. honesty. There's probably been people that have uh, impersonated Batman, I imagine, okay. probably There's, several times, yeah. but no, like, defining character or story arc. Right. There's okay. Batman-alike characters. Like, there's, like, Azrael, who is kind of a maniac, who is batman -y and... I feel like maybe there was even a, an animated series episode where maybe there was an imposter Batman, but, yeah, like, right? there isn't... It's not, like, a villain. It's not, like, yeah. one guy is always doing this. Right. Like... The imposter, as we find out, is not, like, a name villain. No. Yeah, right. Which, before we get too far ahead of it, maybe that was, like, my only kind of disappointment with this is, like, oh, it's just a guy. You know? But it does yeah. make yeah. sense in the scope of it, and yeah. it's not, like, fantastical villains at all in this, so, mm -hmm. like, if it was a Joker, it would feel mm -hmm. out of place. Yeah. But, um, yeah, I guess, let's, let's get into this imposter here. He's targeting criminals that were released from jail mm -hmm. because Commissioner Gordon, when he was fired for colluding with <laughs> Batman, yeah. all of those cases of criminals that they arrested together were thrown out. Right. Because they're like, this guy's dressed up as a bat. Like, this whole thing's just... Yeah, it's the it's crooked messed court up. Yeah, yeah. It's, I'm out of here. Oh, yeah. man. They drained the swamp. They drained the swamp. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Yes, okay. they do. So all these, like, murderers and rapists and everything are on the street again. Yeah. And there is a vigilante Batman toting guns. Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. Cleaning up the streets. Basically a Punisher Batman. <laughs> so he's going around murdering people and Batman is taking the blame for it. And he's trying to kind of clear his name. And there's also this whole uh, Gotham PD task mm -hmm. force that's mm -hmm. sent to bring in the Batman. Because mm -hmm. they don't know the difference. And there we're introduced to a uh, detective, Blair Wong, mm -hmm. is kind of leading up the charge. Great character and awesome. I think she's new. Like, I don't think she's I've never established heard of her Batman before. character. Yeah. Okay. I love the analog between her and Bruce. So uh -huh. she's going around town. She's on the beat trying to get, like, information on him. And she ends up kind coming of going, across Bruce. Coming across she's Bruce. She's following the paper trail. Exactly. She's like, it's Batman. We got these motorcycles. That That's been, right. Uh, had filed the uh, Vins yeah. with their own Wayne Enterprise motorcycles. Yeah. What's Ooh. going on here, Ooh. huh? It's a bit of a detective What's yourself here. Oh, my. So she goes. She winds up in Bruce's front door. She's like, we need to talk about Batman. Mm-hmm. Bruce Wayne's like, 
do you one better is talk about our dead parents. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and we ah, find ah. out they have some shared trauma there. Yeah, yeah. Her parents were also killed. In, Very conveniently. Uh, and they kind of form a bond. And at first, they're both kind of using each other to get information. Mm. Batman wants information on the case against him. Mm -hmm. She wants information on the Batman. And they end up kind of developing a little bit of a love mm -hmm. yeah. together. Which initially happens a little quick, but like they both have similar backgrounds. They're doing what they do because of that, mm -hmm. and they are they understand each other. Yeah. They yeah. have a scene in bed where they're like doing the Jaws scar scene. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yep. Yeah. Where'd you get this? Yeah. Mugger. <laughs> Where'd you get this? Bicycle accident. But it all kind of crumbles as the investigation goes forward and their paths intertwine mm -hmm. as they get closer and closer to the imposter, oh, the titular boy. imposter. Mm -hmm. Along the way, we do uh, see a couple other Batman mainstays. Yeah. We see a brief glimpse of the Penguin, Black Mask. Yeah. We see. Talk about mm. They talk about uh, Sionis Industries too briefly, about them being another one of the wealthiest companies. Mm. That's a kind of a big talking point. And that was also kind of how they're investigating the motorcycles who would right. have money to uh -huh. fund the Batman. Right. Another one is Wesker. Yeah. Who is another like Wayne Enterprise type of person. And his son is a deranged puppeteer yep. who mm -hmm. is uh, the burgeoning young ventriloquist mm -hmm. character who we only get little glimpses of, but it was enough where I'm like, I actually kind of like that. I do <laughs> that too. That iteration of the ventriloquist. There is one panel that I like almost laughed out loud about. It's when like, he, he's obviously just got a puppet who's he thinks is talking to him. And there's one where you can see him kind of like going out the side of his mouth, talking like a little puppet. Yeah, like, like, oh, yeah. I thought that's that was... quite masterly yeah. craft. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I'm still working on the ventriloquism part. Yeah. But we find out that his dad is abusing him. Uh, and they have a terrible relationship. And yeah. he's actually asking the Batman to kill his father. Yeah. And then, uh, one more, we get the rat catcher. Yeah. Who I only know from Suicide Squad, but I apparently that is a DC character. Mm -hmm. I don't think it's anything like this iteration of no. the character, but they're in it for a bit and uh, is kind of like the accomplice of the imposter. Unknowingly. This, yeah, he this kind he's of dim right? yeah. uh, person that thinks he's helping and then eventually gets uh, brought in by the police and kills himself because mm -hmm. he doesn't want to give up information. Yeah. yeah, And he's just in way over his head at this point. So as it winds down, the identity of the imposter is revealed. Mm -hmm. It's not this alarming shock. It's actually the partner of Detective Wong. Yeah. This kind of big, beefy, angry big cop yeah. that has been kind of throughout the whole thing. His name's Hatcher, I yeah. think, an original character in this. And, I mean, it's at this point, it's really the only character it could be. I feel like. Yeah. Unless, I heard someone, maybe it was online, some discourse saying it would be interesting if it was Jim Gordon. Ooh. Which I was like, that actually would be a very interesting take uh, yeah. on this. It would completely, like, derail the traditional yeah. Batman storyline. Yeah. But that's not a bad idea, that considering been... he was, like, kicked off the force. And mm -hmm. I feel like you could have had a red herring of it being Jim Gordon throughout the whole book, and that would have been actually a really yeah. captivating read. That would have been cool. But it's not. It's this other guy. Yeah. <laughs> and he's doing it because he thinks what Batman brought to Gotham is terrible. They got all these criminals released because he muddled with the arrestings mm -hmm. and the yeah. investigation. And now he's acting as Batman so he can right that wrong and Batman will take the blame mm -hmm. for the murders. And I'm like, okay, that all checks out. Yeah. It's pretty cut and dry. It's a self-sufficient story. I think overall it worked pretty well for me. He got a Dark Knight Returns callback of a bat in his eyeball, oh, which yeah. is pretty great. Batman is not afraid to use violent force no. throughout this. Yeah. He is whipping those shuriken yeah. batarangs. They don't even look like bats. They just look like They're just knives. knives. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. He'll uh he'll waterboard a slow man, pretty much, <laughs> oh, yeah. until he gives him his knowledge. Like, he's pretty ruthless in this. And this all comes down to Sorrentino's artwork. Mm -hmm. And he looks awesome mm -hmm. in this. Like, he's tactical, mm -hmm. like, all of that stuff. And Did like, you say tactical? Yes. Did you just tactical. coin that? No, I've okay. heard it. I've all heard right. it. Another, I won't take credit for all right. it. On the show, I will. But <laughs> <laughs> not, not on the bigger 
scope of the web. Okay. I love how mysterious he is in this. Like, he'll just, like, disappear into, like, the jet black that Sorrentino loves to do in his color palettes and mm -hmm. stuff like that. The artwork is immaculate, as always. Mm -hmm. The layouts and the paneling and the detail Very are interesting. exactly what you'd yeah. expect from Sorrentino. Yeah. PK, this is a, a, a crazy one to just drop you in as right. a non-comic reader, but what did you think of the style of this? Not your traditional panel-by-panel panel layout. Right. Did you find it difficult to navigate at times? Because I yes. did. <laughs> there was there was actually a two-page hey, spread. Hey, I asked Paul. Go on. <laughs> no, I, I thought it was beautiful. I mean, I only watched it on the digital, mm. you know, my phone. I didn't have a paper copy. You read it on your phone? <laughs> so I was swiping panel-by-panel, panel, and I really loved... I did. I really loved the, the art style. Uh, the colors were really in my opinion, very vibrant and very, mm. like, kind of watercolory. Yeah. yeah. And it just... Jordi Belair did the mm. colors. He and was, she is really awesome. Really good. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, when you... When we were at... When we were talking to Wesker, it was very, like, like corporate mm -hmm. panel with a, with a statue in the background and all the others were more organic. It was... I was very impressed by it. Yeah. There were cool art choices of, like, when he when Batman would reach into his thing, like they'd give like a little X-ray yeah, thing of yeah, us yeah, there. Yeah. Oh, they did the Mortal Kombat yeah, bone breaking. They did. Yeah, yeah, I remember that. When he yeah. cracked a skull on the yeah. pavement. Or whatever. Yeah, was, yeah. yeah, I thought that was an interesting choice. There was only one two-page spread that I was getting to that, like, I had trouble reading because it was like in a circle. Like, oh, it was yeah. like kind of in a circle, and I was so like, very Gideon Falls. "What the yeah. fuck am I saying?" Yeah. Like. I think I read it three different ways, and then, like, one of the ways made the most sense, I guess. Like they were circling around, but then it was like they were moving away from it, and it was like, it was very, I was very impressed by it. I'm sure Dave's going to put it, it on the screen. Yes. That's the yeah. one! Yes. <laughs> I was very impressed by that part. Yeah. Like, you can't just l read left to right on that. Like, mm -hmm. I like this one, too, where yeah. the panels are, like, in, uh, in line the with city. the city, uh -huh. yeah. the dimensions of the city. Or the perspective of the city. Mm -hmm. Like that a lot. And I love the whole color scheme. The spot where, coloring. Like, the reds and the blacks and the whites. Yeah. It is a very black, white, and red book. Mm -hmm. And um, sometimes I feel like that is a little hard to distinguish what's happening. Uh, especially in the fight sequences. Yeah. And then other times when the two of them are fighting, I'm like, I don't know which one is getting hurt here. Uh -huh. Yeah. And I thought it was Bruce was dealing out the damage, but I think a lot of it at the end, he is getting his ass kicked. No, I think that was my one biggest tell in that, is like the one who was bloodiest and had the most wounds in him was <laughs> Bruce Wayne. <Yeah. laughs> Probably the most, as we've said, realistic and grounded interpretation of Batman to date. Yeah. And I feel like this is something that's said every year, you know? Oh, yeah. Like, they're always trying to bring Batman cl down to his roots more and more. Yeah. And I think this is the new high or lowest bar <laughs> to the ground <laughs> yeah. that you can do. And I think a lot of times when people make something realistic, they, the detractors of that think of it as, like, comics are a problem that you need to solve. Yeah. Where I think some of that is really fun is watching, like, the deconstruction of this. I'm not saying it's a problem. I think it's kind of a cool situation where you're like, okay, how would we make that work? I know it's not going to happen in real life, but I like to kind of do that thought analogy of, like, yeah. okay, let's say it was. Like, what, what right. would you come up with to tell this in this grounded take? Yeah, I love the thought experiment. But oh. I, I honestly... If there is a character you can go realistic with, it's Batman. Like, you can't do that with everybody. Right, so, like, right. go for it with this one. I always think that, at the end of the day, it has to be a story that's told that is relatable. And I feel like going more gritty, mm -hmm. more realistic, I feel like it's more, like, acceptable for people to think, oh, well, that's an interesting story because it's more relatable to the people that are... Maybe not big consuming comic readers. that, yeah, I bet. yeah, not consuming that media and thinking like Batman when he gets out of the scuffle, what is he gonna do? In this book, he like took a guy out of his car and said, "Get out!" and like took his car and like <laughs> yeah. crashed it. 
Whereas, like, in the movies back in the day, you know, back in the 90s, it was like, he has his own Batmobile. Or he has the bat, you know, flying thing. I forgot what it was called. Plane. I don't, any book where you can say, hey, Bruce Wayne is willing to see a therapist. Maybe we all can. Yeah. That's a great thing, oh, right? My. <laughs> I'm glad you said that. So let's go to the very last page of this mm -hmm. book. Let's do it. Where we cross paths with the ventriloquist one more time. He's sitting in his weird little doll room, mm -hmm. jerking off in <laughs> rage to his father or whatever. I don't know what he's doing. It's very shadowed. Yeah. And uh, Batman arrives. Eventually, Chris says, like, oh, are you here to, to kill my father for me? Mm -hmm. And Batman's like, I Jesus got something Christ. better for you. <laughs> and all of a sudden, we see a knock on Leslie's door. Leslie opens it up. There's a ventriloquist, and he's like, a friend told me to come see you. So... After all this, Bruce is uh, ready to maybe promote some healing. Yeah! Hmm. Along with all his violence. Yeah, I, like, this is a guy that, a month ago, he would have just beat him yeah. the car. <laughs> Why don't you get right, idiot? <laughs> no. But he's like, you know what? Maybe we can heal. Yeah. Can we heal? Yeah. I loved the end of this. Mm -hmm. Like, he's just willing to help people get better like the social systems they work yeah. don't send everyone to jail to arkham yeah, yeah. exactly so Les yeah help leslie the... had a little bit of a breakthrough yeah. with bruce help these people like it's it's a great thing to see mm -hmm. yeah i thought that was a fantastic ending to this yeah. mm -hmm. as we've said this felt very very in line to the batman movie mm -hmm. so if you are a the Batman movie fan, mm -hmm. which you should be, because it's a good movie. Paul, you'll realize that tomorrow after you see it. Yeah. yeah. This is a great uh, next step from there. If you're still wanting to kind of live in that universe, mm -hmm. this is as close as I think anything is at the moment. Yeah, I would say. This uh, Batman the Imposter was recommended to me by a friend of the show and Discord member, Drew Markham, who mm -hmm. also did some phenomenal Imperius Rex show art for he us did. recently. Uh, you can find some of that on our red bubble account if you want yeah. to buy some fun imperius rex merch oh yeah he was doing the bat gods work oh my huh. god putting that together so good. great yeah. stuff big thanks to drew thank you i drew. mean i knew about this book but his, <laughs> yeah he he asked me if i'd read it I'm like not yet he told me a little bit about it i'm like you know what that sounds great we're gonna get a stranger to read that book who's yep. never read a Batman <laughs> book before ultimate test yeah. ultimate litmus <laughs> test <Yeah. laughs> I think that about does it for this does, episode. Does that do it for this episode? My God. Is it? I don't know. I don't know how these episodes are managed. So well, we usually it? just kind of peter out and yeah, 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 uh, yeah, just go into eat. a slumber. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, I, no! Wait, wait, wait. Oh. I see. I see. We have uh, a blinking on the red phone there. It's almost as if people realized they could call in uh, from Jared Leto. <laughs> You uh, did. Paving the way. Thank you, Jared. I think we have a couple voicemails there. Can you? Can we? we? Listen to a few of them right now. Should we? We. The number is here. The bat phone is open. So if you have, oh, are, uh, wait. Are they? I'm just gonna. on hold. Uh, no. Actually, just hang it up. Let's. All right. I'm gonna call it the voicemail. How's all right. That sound? Let's do it. Let's do it. All right. Hey guys, this is Ryan. Um, I'm a big follower of the show and a big fan. I just wanted to say my two favorite Batman stories are actually by Scott Snyder, and they came out. Um, they're kind of like sequels to each other, or they're kind of continuing. So I have, uh, you know, it's Batman Endgame, uh, which is an incredible Joker story, an incredible Batman story, which ties into Batman Super Heavy, which is where Jim Gordon takes over as Batman. Now, I know a lot of people didn't like that, but I think it was a really awesome idea that they absolutely should bring back, even though it it, it doesn't sound great on paper. It really was um, awesome in execution. It seems like they Gordon almost forgot about that entire experience, and so... Uh, Seeing that Gordon stepped in Batman's shoes was super interesting. Uh, on the other hand, uh, Endgame, again, like I said, is one of the best, I think, Batman stories in the past, you know, I, really ever. I think it's so good and underappreciated. And it's definitely a sequel to Death in the Family, which I think is all right. But uh, it's definitely not as good as Endgame because Joker really has a bone to pick with Batman. And it's, and it's a really cool one. So uh, if you guys haven't checked those out, I would definitely suggest it. Oh, man. Ryan, thank you yeah. for that voicemail. Appreciate it. Ryan uh, created some comics of his own. He did! He did. He did some uh, kind of horror anthology and mm. a, a Christmas-themed story, which I believe were both on Kickstarter. Yeah. And a lot of fun. And perfect example on his recommendations of some of that fantastical Batman oh, yeah. stories that there's plenty of out there. <laughs> yeah. Those are two good ones. And I know our... 
our other co-host, who is probably nursing an injury right now. Oh, I'm sure. Not a big fan of the Snyder Batman. You just give me an excuse. I'll jump right back in. Wow. I could do some Snyder Batman. Wow. Especially mm. hot off uh, the Batman. Yeah. I've been kind I, of getting an itch to maybe reread that I was say, Zero I Year. Zero Year might fit Riddler. pretty well, I'd say. Shall we? Shall we? I think we got maybe one or two more there. Should we give it a give it a listen? Blast off! All right, hello. Uh, this was the bat phone line for the you know personal favorite Batman stories. I wanted to go ahead and share mine. It is a uh, Batman Strange Apparitions by Steve Englehart, Walt Simonson, and of course Marshall Rogers. To me, this is the culmination of everything that has made Batman great. Um, has action, mystery, horror, romance, tragedy. And lightheartedness. And Steve Englehart, to me, just balances out the lighthearted and the dark and gothic perfectly well, takes it back to the pulp roots, and has a great ensemble of uh, villains. And, of course, the storyline is uh, several episodic adventures all uh, intertwined by one uh, long story arc, which basically includes Rupert Thorne, Boss Rupert Thorne, and Silver Saint Cloud. And I read an interview once that Tom McFarlane uh, consider, considers Marshall Rogers his favorite Batman artist. Uh, so, yeah, I just wanted to share that and hope you all have a good day. Oh, oh wow. Well, hmm. I'm going to be honest. I haven't read a whole lot from that era. Neither have like I. Like the Steve Englehart Batman. But those sounded so interesting, I went and I bought that collection. Wow. And you know what? We'll see if we can get to it. We'll see if we can fit it in the show. It's not here yet. It's, it's in the mail. You just wait. It's in the mail. Do you, you want in on that? Yeah, sure. Oh, okay. I'm not going to buy it, but... It, look, I think we got time for one more. Are you sure? There's one more. All right. There's a couple, but we only have time for one more. We'll get to the others. Here we go, folks. Do it. Hey, Imperious Rex boys. It's your Dallas Cowboy and Bat Fan Den uh, Gaming from the, uh, from the uh, Discord group. And uh, I was just calling to let you guys know I really dig the hell out of your shows, and uh, I'm loving the hell out of this bat year. Um, yeah, it's been interesting. Those two episodes have been great so far. Keep up the good work, guys. Talk to you later. Well, I don't know what a Dallas Cowboy is, but I do know a Batman. Mm -hmm. <laughs> That's right. Wow. <laughs> thank you for the kind words, yeah. Finn. And uh, thank you for being a member of our Discord. That's right. Wonderful community. Yeah, that it is, is community. literally no, growing. Yeah. Beyond control. <laughs> We're going to yep. have to put a lid on that. Treat it as a pressure cooker. Oh, boy. Let it boil. Let into it into a hot melting yep. pot. Mm -hmm. And then take the lid off and see what happens. Oh, my See the God. chaos. Yeah. Maybe we should let it simmer a little bit. I don't yeah, know. Like maybe cooking an algae five, soup. Minutes. You made yeah. a soup. Yeah. How do we do this? Yeah. <laughs> just stir it a little bit. <laughs> we'll just stir it up. up. Okay, okay. Stir it up the soup. Maybe. Taking a sip. Oh, oh, oh. Is that the last of our voicemails from today? From the bat phone? For now. Oh, my. God. But the line is open, as you yeah. saw. Jared Leto uh, broke the seal. He sure did. Thank God. Thank you, Jared. I think a couple bat year episodes ago, yeah. we threatened that we were going to get into peak Bruce Wayne physique. Ooh. Peak physique. We did. And we have. Oh, we have. <laughs> but it's a work in progress. It is. It so, takes time. That's right. We're not, wasn't built in a day. I was saying, uh, we just ate a bunch of pizza. It takes time. That's right. We're yeah. growing as opposed to showing at the moment. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. But, but we, uh, we've been hitting the gym. Yeah. Neil, you, what do you think? What I, do you think of this Planet Fitness? I think we've been, we've been, I've been feeling pretty good. My I'm knees have honestly never felt better. I thought which, you were going to say worse. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no. They feel good. You know, I hit the elliptical, hit the bikes. Not the treadmill too tough on the knees, but... Mm. Oh my, like they feel like just you oiled up. up. You gotta toughen up them knees. <sighs> no, know. treadmill's gonna wreck those knees. I don't want them to really gonna roughen up those and, knees. Uh, okay, but man, yeah, I've been feeling it. Like I'm feeling the burn today. Yeah, like, oh my God. Oh, 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 oh have you ever felt oh so blessed? God. Paul. Oh, oh, Paul. Oh, Paul. Oh, have you? By the end of the year, Dave and I will be so cut, or oh maybe we'll just be in a uh, Robert Pattinson shape. But it's still, it's still coming. It's still, it's still coming, coming along. Oh man! But it has, it's been feeling good. It's been feeling good. I recommend if you're in your twenties, start working out now because when you're in your thirties, your body just is like, nah, it doesn't nah, want to do much. Up. So just, no. you know, keep ahead of, keep ahead of the game. That's the advice I'm gonna give. So that's about right. All right. Well. <laughs> 
God bless you. But hey, what did you think of Batman? Imposter? Let us know in the comment section down below. Have you read it yet? It's a pretty new book. It just came out this year, but I would highly recommend you check it out. Feel free to join our Discord, which you can via our Patreon. And Paul, it's your birthday, so uh, like and subscribe for yeah, Paul. Yeah, like and for subscribe for Paul for birthday. Do you guys say like, like and subscribe, smash that bell button. No, oh, no, Hit no. that thumbs up. We don't, no. we don't promote violence on the show. Yeah, I don't know. Uh, Paul, where can, where can people find you if they would like to follow your antics? Um... That's all right. No, you don't need to find <laughs> Well, if you would like to see Paul back in this hot seat, mm -hmm. let us know. Maybe call the bat phone. That's right. If you don't want Paul anywhere near this seat, call the bat call phone. Call the bat phone too. <laughs> Let us know. It'll be like that. Should Robin die or not? Where yeah, you call oh, it? That's per if only we could change the bat phone to a nine hundred number, yep. and we could somehow profit off. You of it. tell us if we need to beat him with a crowbar. Let us know oh. in the comment section down below. But until next time, I've been Dinosaur Neil. I've been Ghost Hunter Dave. And I'm PKP. Oh, oh, and this has been Imperious Rex. We'll catch you next time. Double thumbs up for Ooh, me. Oh yeah. If Dave got a live one, one, I'll read oh it. Oh my god. I've, here you go. Batman the Imposter. Oh, thank you. <laughs> We're gonna need that back. <laughs> Thanks. Why well, I already read this. Oh. Maybe is there another one? Uh there's issue there, two. Yep. Yeah. There's three Batman books. <laughs> and you read them. You read them all. What's that? You're up to speed. Son Sonja. Reds or er, this Hell Sonia. We had uh this this cover model. Uh, she she joined us on the yeah. show one day, sent in a oh, video. Oh, really? Yeah. yeah. Cool. Okay. Yeah, That's for one of our X-Men episodes. Yeah. That's Gracie Cosplay. Yeah. Shout out. Gracie the Cosplay Lass. Nice. Cool. cool. Very wonderful individual. Oh, yep. Yeah. Yep, it's going to be a rotating, yeah. revolving door of guest spots here. <laughs> yep. Yeah. We'll see how you do. Well. We'll have a little talk behind the scenes mm -hmm. afterwards, and we'll let you know. Yeah. We'll let you know. Okay. <laughs> Hopefully the check's going to be in the mail, but okay. <laughs> All right. Uh, did you make the sale? I did make the sale, by the way. I just want to let have that be known. I did. Good. All right. Checked. So